Hello out there, Internet. Welcome to episode 32 of Funny Book Splatter, a horror comics podcast brought to you by HorrorTalk.com. I am your host, James Ferguson. This week's guest is Garth Mathams, the writer of Witch Creek Road. This comic is yet another reason to stay out of the woods. It follows a group of kids to head out into the wilderness for a night of debauchery, only to find demons and death. Garth is currently running a Kickstarter campaign to fund the printing of the second issue. I've backed the campaign and I strongly encourage you to do the same. I got a glimpse at this new issue and it just might be scarier than the first, which is saying something. Entry level for this Kickstarter is $1. Canadian. I don't even know what they use for money in Canada. Hockey pucks? Anyway, that gets you the full 32-page issue as a PDF. That's a total no-brainer for a great horror comic. If you're somehow still on the fence, you can check out a black and white version of the first issue for free on Tapas or Webtoons. Trust me though, it's worth the dollar. Garth can be found online at his official website, releasingtheserpents.com. I also want to give a few quick shout-outs of some stuff from past guests. At the time of this episode's release, you'll have a few hours left to back Transdimensional Number 2 on Kickstarter. That's written by Michael Gordon, who was a very early guest on the show. Uh, in other news, if you missed the Kickstarter campaign for Sync, the first issue of that series just hit comic shops this week. That's written by John Lee, is another early guest. You may have to look really hard for it uh, because it seems to be selling out all over the place. Pro uh, single issues on eBay are going for like 40, 50 bucks, which is ridiculous. Um, anyway, uh, lastly, as a reminder, Glitter Bomb The Fame Game debuts next week on September 20th, written by past guest Jim Zub. All right, that is it for the news and updates, folks. Now on with the show. Here we are with episode 32 of Funny Book Splatter with Garth Mathos. To jump right in, how would you describe something like Witch Creek Road to an average, uh, like, like pretend, I guess, you're at a at a convention and you have to pitch Witch Creek Road. How do you, how do, you do it? Um, I'd probably, uh, like, elevator pitches are always really hard. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're always it, we're always hardest on ourselves. Um, like I would try to pitch it as Witch Creek Road is it's survival horror. Mm -hmm. um, it's a group of kids going to the woods, take a wrong turn, and they find themselves in a situation where you know it's it's do or die. Um, but with that said, probably the best like elevator pitch that I've read came from uh, a review. That described it as like for issue one at least, uh, Mean Girls in the Evil Dead universe. I love that description. So, I love it. Yeah, yeah. And again, um, that was someone else coming up with it. So well, I'm also kind of uh, disappointed that I didn't think of that either. You know, I reviewed the book yeah. and I'm like, oh man, that's a way better tagline. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I wrote it and I, you know, <laughs> couldn't think of it. Yeah, it's it's funny how that kind of stuff pops up, but. Um, but yeah, it, it sounds like a uh, response to the... So you had the first issue through Kickstarter. Um, response, how has the response been to that first issue? It's been really good. Um, yeah, the, fairly fairly positive. I haven't really had too many negative reactions to it. Um, mostly, just a few things here and there. Because, I mean, with indie comics, it's, it's interesting because you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. There's no, like editor at the big guys saying no you got to do this you got to stick within 22 pages you have to do whatever so there were a few things where we tried just to see what what it would be like and not too sure if some of them succeeded like the the full page of the guy telling jokes um that's probably the the weakest page in the comic and that page will end up changing but you know it was just trying something new mm -hmm. and, and seeing how it would be received. But for the most part, it's been really, really good. That's good to hear. Well, look, you're now preparing to, I, as we're speaking, you're preparing to launch the Kickstarter for the second issue, um, which yeah. I, I you, you were kind enough to share the, um, the, the new book with me ahead of time. And it, it does take a, a slight turn, but it's still equally terrifying i found in that it's it's oh. this really you know a, bu a bunch of kids in the woods you know another example of kids i'm a big advocate of just staying out of the woods like nothing good ever happens out in the woods uh no but i like that it's 
more kind of I, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, I guess you could say kind of demonic, but there's a different kind of creature there than what you encounter in the first issue. And it's yeah. just like these kids that are thrown into this world of just, well, they're stuck here where where they have little to no hope of surviving. What can they possibly do to to get out of this even remotely intact? And it's it's just that that kind of idea of like just putting yourself in that in those shoes for a minute like how would you get out of there and i know i would be the first one got, killed like i would just immediately be run over mur- murdered with that in, in a heartbeat yeah i don't think i'd last too long either. <laughs> no have have you gone camping you know not anytime soon like i i think the last time i had anything that was like remotely close to camping was um Back in college, when I was in, um, uh, I worked at the radio and TV station. So I hosted a radio show called Too Fast, Too Ferguson. And um, we did this like retreat at a place uh, that was like kind of like a camp uh, team building kind of place. Um, and that was years ago. But I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Like, I like electricity. I like cell phone service. Like, I like having yeah, a bed. plumbing. Yeah. I like having a bed and, you know, uh, indoor plumbing, you know, all that stuff. It's just, yeah. uh, I'm good. You know, like there's just, I have little to no interest in camping. The, the world's beautiful. It's great, but I'm just, I'm going to see it from this side. Yeah. Small doses. <laughs> I, I don't need to spend the night there. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. Like, you know, if we go to, we go to parks, we do that kind of stuff during the day. I'm fine. I have no interest in sleeping in the woods. Um, and, yeah. and reviewing horror comics has proved that, yeah, I probably shouldn't go anywhere near there either. Yeah, and I'm I'm a big believer that the moment you lose your cell phone reception, just turn around, and go home. <laughs> yeah, and that's like, a good boundary my to wife, have. Yeah, like my wife and I, we we sometimes go on little hikes, and we were driving out somewhere to some lake. I don't even remember where we were going, and the road turned to a dirt road, and it just kept going. And there came a part where we just looked at each other and we turned around and we left. Like, <laughs> smart, like, smart yeah, move. No, no need to take chances. Yeah, you're not. We're not going to read about you on the news later about like. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> writer found writer's corpse found strung up somewhere. Yeah. So better safe than sorry yeah. in that case. Exactly. Now, what what drew you to to create a story like this what was it a was it a, a fear of the woods and in, in areas without cell phone service or um or, or were there influences that led to this kind of book um it was probably more like so years ago i lived in japan and there'd be weekends where i had nothing to do so i would go to the dollar store i'd buy some cheap pizza i'd go to the video store i'd rent some sometimes really bad sometimes good horror movies and I just spend the movie eating cheap pizza and watching horror movies. And a lot of them, there's, they're pretty formulaic in some regards. And it, gave, it came to the point where I just started kind of writing my own stories in my head. And this is the one that actually stuck with me throughout the years. So it probably had something to do with like what I was watching at the time. Um, how long would you say it went from that... Um, idea phase into a completed comic oh probably like 10 years yeah i I, it's rarely do i hear anyone that's just like i I think i talked to one guy once who was like oh yeah it i just did it in like a like a weekend and it's like usually it's you know it takes time you have those stories kind of build in your head and um they're kind of like baking and it's like it's got to be just right for it to come out and and uh and 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 really all everything to to click Um, so I think I've, I've talked about it on the show a little bit, but I've been like kicking around a script myself and I found like, that's an idea I've had for 12 years, I'd say 12, like 10 or 11. It's just an idea. Like I had in the back of my head, I was like, Oh, wouldn't it be cool if I did this and then start finally to the point where I'm like putting it to paper and stuff and, and having drafts of it. And it's, it's, it's such a cathartic feeling to like, Oh yeah. Now this is like almost into the world. So it's a, it's a really great feeling and you know. Oh, I encourage anyone to do it. If you have a, if you have an inkling of it, if you want to tell a story, just just write it down. It's the only way it's going to get out there. Otherwise, you're going to have that idea like I had for friggin' ever. Get it out there. Yeah, I, f- I feel like sometimes too, you don't want to do it too soon. Like sometimes the story can appear, and it's premature. You know, like yeah. it hasn't finished growing. 
So sometimes it's not bad leaving it for like 10 or 12 years. Yeah, it's got, like I said, it's got to like bake. So you have, it's not its yep. time or maybe you know, you'll, you'll stumble upon something or even just see something in your travels and go, oh, and like everything will click. You'll have this aha moment. So bringing a mm-hmm. notebook around is a really good tool I found and just making sure it's oh, like any time yeah. because I forget stuff so easily. So it's like, oh yeah, I should have, if I wrote that down, then it would, it'll stay there and I could come back to it later on. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good your memory is. You need to write stuff down yeah. because <laughs> you'll be out. You'll hear like the best little snippet of dialogue, and you're gonna forget it. Yeah, like you're, or you'll remember it, but it'll be slightly different. And you, you need to have a notebook. You need to write things down. Definitely. Now, uh, going back to to the book for a second. So, how did you get with uh, the artist on Witch Creek Road? How did that connection come okay. about? So Keenan, who who's nailing the artwork, like I love this guy. It's pretty great. Um, it's pretty I, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. And my biggest fear is that one some big company is going to find him before we finish, because mm-hmm. uh, it's going to be five issues when it's done, and we're about like maybe a third of the way through issue three. Um, but fingers crossed that they don't discover him until <laughs> afterwards. <we're done. laughs> well, it'll uh, be one hell yeah. of a resume for uh, for him yeah. to, to give out. Yeah, yeah. So we met on um, DeviantArt, which I think uh, a fair number of writers probably use because I keep hearing similar stories. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's yeah, amazing. Like across... a, it's such a great tool that it's just you could kind of search out there and there's just a there's a bunch of artists that are just like, yeah, like I'm looking not even just looking for work, just like this is what I'm doing. And I'm, you know, I'm, lo- I'm looking for feedback and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I came across some like Spider-Man test pages he had done um i guess just for fun mm-hmm. and the the pages were like spider-man and the lizard and just the way that he had drawn the lizard and stuff i was like you know what this guy can do horror so yeah the, the, the rest is history <laughs> <laughs> that's great um how how has been the how, how has the collaboration process been between you two so is was it something where like are you writing a full script or are you um like kind of uh, more of like the marvel method or somewhere in between It's it's kind of like the opposite of the Marvel method because like, when we started, I would send them full pages, like page one, panel one, panel two, panel three. Um, but eventually it got to the point where he was just doing so good with so little direction that I started kind of like, formatting it more in like a script format, like a movie script. Mm-hmm. So I'll have like a exterior like woods night and very very minimal like these are the characters this is the emotion these are like just some actions that are happening and this is the dialogue and i let him choose how many pages he wants to use on the scenes um i let him kind of like figure out how many panels he wants to use on each page and it's been working out really well like every page he sends me is is amazing wow uh, I, I, that's that's great. Well, you have to find a way to, I guess, you, you'll find a good vibe with any artist that you work with. But to, to find that mm-hmm. nice flow and that, all right, this is what you need. Like that's something that I think some uh, beginning writers don't realize is that you know your script isn't something that more than like three or four people are ultimately going to see. It's a it's a yeah. something you're writing for one person ideally, which is the artist. Um, everything else like everyone else that you show it to or if you include it in back matter that's nice but really you need that one person to understand everything that's in that in that script so it's an audience mm-hmm. of one yeah and the other thing with the script too is you know you can keep on putting like panel one panel two and have these paragraph long descriptions of like what's going on but i feel like that would hinder keenan more than it would help him because then he's kind of stuck trying to draw these images that I've laid down on the page for him instead of just letting him do what he does best, which is draw. So yeah, I, I just find it easier to let him do his stuff and stay out of his way as much as I can. Yeah. You're kind of, you, you want, yeah, exactly right. You're going to stay out of his way. Like let him do what he needs to do, which it's like you, you're, yeah. you're working with him. You're paying him for a reason and that's to, to draw great artwork and he knows what he's doing clearly. So yeah, let him, let him yeah. keep doing that. That's great. 
Now, what about the monsters in the book? Like, how did how did you settle on? I think you, you called them in the Kickstarter for the first issue, uh, sexy flesh eating demons. Um, yeah. Where did something like that come about? Um, well, the so the origin is they were originally vampires, mm-hmm. and this was back when during the like original draft, like ten years ago. Um, yeah, they were vampires, and my my friend read the script, the the original draft one. And she was like, it just wasn't working for her as vampires. So it was something I was having some issues with too because they weren't quite acting like vampires. They weren't sucking blood. They were eating flesh. Mm -hmm. And it just finally clued in that, no, these these are demons. These are not vampires. So once once I shifted that in terms of like the, uh, the, the antagonists, um, then I guess I, I really just told Keenan they're, they're attractive, they're female, but there's something off, you know, there's something not human about them. And I can't remember because in my head, I've always thought of them as, as sharks, you know, something like an apex predator. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I said that to him, but I love the fact that he made their eyes black, like these kind of soulless black eyes and yeah he gave them claws too which i quite like because they're fairly effective in you know just dispatching the the different characters yeah it's a it's a really fantastic design so i was yeah i was curious as to how some of that came about but because it's they're they're sleek they're they're like just efficient killing machines and at first like all right they just look like tough tough women but then you know that those claws come out and it's just it's just so creepy the way they have it set up and it's like you kind of get lured into this like false sense of security a bit where it's like oh, okay maybe they're just some kids and then like just horrifically murdering people tearing yeah. them apart it's just so oh <laughs> it's great as a horror fan, yeah so yeah, I, it's fantastic yeah yeah, so I mean, Keenan definitely took whatever ideas I gave to him. He ran with it and produced something better than what I had in my mind. So again, another, another, you know, awesome job by him. Mm-hmm. Now, um, there, there's a. I don't want to spoil it, but there's a different monster of sorts in the second issue. Um, it's kind of like a different um, turn. Do you now how? How did this uh, creature get about? I guess we, we, we want to dance around it a little bit because I don't want to totally spoil anything. But yeah, well, the demons come back in issue three. Okay, so they're they're not gone. They're definitely still there. <laughs> um, I would say this is let's let's describe it as kind of their pet, at least one of their pets. Oh, interesting. Uh, it's yeah, it's kind of the result of seeing too much um some madness uh yeah it, it's one of those things which is hard to explain without completely ruining yeah so we uh, could, what's happening we'll, we'll move we'll move on because i don't want to totally spoil that like some guys to say like if we thought the demons in the first issue were terrifying wait till you see what's what you guys have cooked up in in the second issue because i think it it might just be scarier like it's it's a it's so good. I, I was so I was so pleased. I, I will by say it. this. Yeah, I will say this though. Um, there's a definite innocence to the one in issue two. Yes, and I feel like Keenan just captured that so well. Like there's panels where you just see this thing which should not exist, and there's almost like a sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. And the, the one of the few things which I mentioned for the the design of this was its mouth is just a little too wide. And I think he captured that pretty well. Like, it's not too, too wide, but it's just enough where it's like, there's something wrong there. Yeah, you, you kind of dabble in, in body horror a little bit with this mm-hmm. thing, because it's, it, it, you're right. And like, there's just aspects of it that if you look at it in a certain angle, you could see, oh, well, this is a, this is a normal person. And then you look at it again, and it's like, oh, no, this is just, wrong like it's it's and it's funny how sometimes you can do things that are real subtle with that like you can make like an arm just like a little too long and then it just becomes like oh that's that's messed up like that's just 
that's too creepy. Of, but it's just an arm. Like, it's just one arm that's just a little bit longer, and it, it can pack such a punch there. Yeah. Uh, now, um, we, we, you're, so you're, your plan is second, the second issue is uh, is going to launch on Kickstarter. The um, what is, And you said it's a five-issue series. So what are the plans? Are you going to continue with uh, utilize, utilizing Kickstarter? How, is, how has that experience been um, for you? Okay, so uh, Kickstarter was amazing. Um, I I'm gonna backtrack a little bit just to give a oh, little yeah. context as to like why I went with Kickstarter. Um, I wrote something else, uh, and it got published um, just over a year ago, last summer, and it was called The Living Finger. So The Living Finger is kind of like a low budget horror in comic book format. Um, it's about a guy who finds what appears to be a living human finger. He takes it home, becomes obsessed with it, names it Wendy, and eventually discovers how to communicate with it to the point where he discovers what the finger wants, which is a new body. And so my plan for, for the living finger was, like, plan A was get it published um, traditionally. You know, find a publisher, get it published. Plan B was Kickstarter. Plan C was putting it up online as a webcomic if I couldn't do plan, or plan A or plan B. And I got lucky. Um, Darby Pop, who I love, like Darby Pop is amazing. Uh, they ended up publishing it. Uh, came out last July. But the problem is no one knew who I was. And I could even put that into like present tense. Like No one still knows who I am. And so... It didn't really sell too well. And the biggest mistake I made was I, I made this thing in a bubble. Like, I didn't tell anyone I was writing a comic. I didn't tell anyone it was going to be published. Um, I kind of held my cards too close to my body and was a little too paranoid about it just seeming too good to be true. So when I started with Witch Crowed, I knew I have to do this the opposite way. Like, I can't just create this in a bubble. I have to try to put it out there as much as I can. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went with Kickstarter. Like, I figured Kickstarter, it's not meant to grow an audience. That's almost the opposite of what, what it's meant for. But it can be used to grow an audience if you, I guess, I don't want to say do it right, but if you're lucky. That's I guess the word. If you're lucky, it can be used to grow an audience. Well, I think I think there's so, some there's some luck to that, but I think if you're putting out a good product and you plan your Kickstarter well, I think you the odds are more in your favor for something like mm -hmm. that uh, than than just kind of it's not a total roll of the dice and it's just kind of like well it's launching because I've seen a I've seen a bunch of campaign like I'll scroll through the Kickstarter platform and I've seen campaigns that they've got like one or two pledges and no updates and it's like and it ends in like in two days and it's like all right well you're not managing that kickstarter but if you're actively working it sending sending links out talking to people updating it then it then you see that interaction and you see a lot more uh pledges come in yeah 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 so my thing was like first of all the comic was done when i did my kickstarter like i didn't want it to be one of those things where i'm trying to raise money for this comic it was done so that was one advantage another one was um like a lot of Kickstarters, their PDFs are five bucks. Their physical copies start at ten bucks. So for me, my physical copy was five, my PDF was a dollar. And this was like a, a 32 page comic. So a buck for 32 pages is, like, in my opinion, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, you can't beat that. Yeah. yeah. And it's the same thing for issue two it's a dollar PDF, five bucks for the, the physical. And so I put it up there, and my, my like, to use retail terms, my BHAG, like, my big, hairy, audacious goal was 100 people. Like, I figured if I could get 100 people, that's 100 more than, like, it's 100 people more than what's reading my stuff right now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I put it up there, had 100 as my goal, and I ended up with about 275 people. Wow. So, just above and beyond anything I could have hoped for. And I don't even remember the question you asked, but 
<laughs> oh, the, how how was your experience with the Kickstarter platform? And I think you answered that in that. Yeah, it, it sounds was like awesome. it was really positive. <laughs> it was. I mean, some people realistically, some people would say that I, in terms of Kickstarter, my campaign was a failure. If you look at the metrics, like how much money did people pledge on average, um, stuff like that. But I don't I, care about that. I no, was looking and I, at and how I would, many people I would, backed. Yeah. Garth, I would totally disagree with that. Like the fact of the matter is you set a goal and you met and exceeded that goal. So yep. you're successful. If anyone, if anyone says your Kickstarter campaign is a failure, they're an idiot. So it's, it, it's, it's in the, the proof is in the pudding there and you delivered. So, and you're back for more. So it's like, okay, you're yep. able to build on that. And the, the goal should be now for the next one is if you had 275, you should be getting at least 300 people at the next one because you're growing and word of mouth is spreading about the product. Yeah, I, I'm I'm hoping for 300 or or more. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that I'm I'm doing this time around is I am putting it online for free. Yeah, I want and I I'm, wanted to ask you about that because so so that was you launched the you did the Kickstarter, people got it, and yeah. now what what is that like? So I don't I'm like totally I I'm totally out of the loop when it comes to is it like tap tap tastic? Is that what it is? Yeah, they call it tapas now. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm doing it on tapas and I'm doing it on webtoons, and. Again, reception has been really, really good. Uh, they're both a little different. Um, on Tapas, people can give tips to creators that they like. On Webtoons, you can link your your Patreon um, account, which I don't have. I don't ever plan on having Patreon. But um, yeah, it's it's been really good because, again, these are people who they haven't read my stuff, they wouldn't read my stuff. Like, if I wasn't putting my stuff on these websites, I will, they would never come across it otherwise. Mm-hmm. So the fact that, you know, people subscribe to my comic on there is awesome. And there's some comics which have like tens of thousands of people subscribing. I'm nowhere near that. But, you know, every time I put up a page a few more people subscribe and it's so far been a really good experience and it's been really good at again growing the audience mm-hmm. well you could use that now because then when hopefully can you are you able to drop like a message or something like that when or to your followers on that platform yeah yeah i'm, I'm gonna do that tonight after i hit launch i'll go into both of those and i'll put a, an update saying hey i i'm doing a kickstarter mm-hmm. and if you you know for only a dollar you can read the entire issue too early uh, you can read it all at once. It's going to be in color instead of black and white. And, you know, you can start thinking of those, like, witty comments that you can post once those pages come up. <laughs> that's that's right. Like, I've, I've, I've heard of this. Like, I have this love-hate relationship with webcomics and that, like, I, I will always forget that they're there and I'll forget to check them frequently. Yeah. And then I'm like, I just now with Kickstarter, though, it's ended up being better because like, yeah, I'll just I'll I'll gladly pay you know, five, 10 bucks or whatever to get a collection of a web comic, even a, a, just a digital comic, I'm saying digital version. Like if you <laughs> put them all into a PDF, I'm there. Cause that way I don't have to click through everything. Yeah. I'm done. Like, yeah. And you know, someone could say, well, idiot, like it's all online for free. Why are you paying for it? I'm like, yeah, but I'm not going to have to sit there and remember, like if you, if you're trying to read a serialized web comic from the beginning, it's really tough to like, all right, I have to make sure I, all right, I'm finishing reading right now on page 37 and I'm going to come back later. Like, I don't, I don't want to do that. I feel like that's a pain in the ass to do, but there is a big audience there um, that, that are, are people that are reading on a regular basis. And then I've seen uh, look, some of the best, most successful Kickstarters that have happened were web comics first. Well, sorry, in, in terms of the comics yeah. world, web comics first, because they built up their audience. They were putting it out there for free for so long. And yeah. now it's like, Hey, we want to do a collection, put a shiny book on the shelf. And then people come out in droves to support that. Yeah. I think like maybe nine out of the 10 or even all 10 of the top 10 comics. I would believe it. Were all web comics. Yeah, because again, they they build up that audience, and they're so people get so loyal to them that it's like, yeah, like absolutely, yeah. you know, you've given me year sometimes years worth of entertainment. Um, yes, for free. Yes, I'll gladly toss you a few bucks if it means that um, it helps you continue making this thing that I love, and that's a that's a big deal. I think that's, but what you're putting it out there in that way, like, yeah, you're you're able to build that audience up and see what you can. Uh, get get more people responsive re, being responsive to your work 
Mm -hmm. And I'm being very clear with these guys too. Like, I'm I'm telling them like you can you can back this or you don't have to. Like it's up to you. It's still going to be posted for free. I'm not, you know, posting issue one and then stopping and making you pay for the rest. It's like nope. I will post everything for you, and if you want to back it, that's up to you. And I think people respond to that because that's something like you're being authentic and, you know, yeah, they could just wait if they if they want to. They could just wait for it. And it'll show up there eventually. Although you did say it was what it's it's black and white on, in that version. Is that correct? Yeah, it's in grayscale. OK, so they don't get the, the full experience uh, of the colors, which the colors do make a difference. I've seen both versions. The colors, I, I can say it's worth it's worth the dollar that it <laughs> costs for this. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and, and that way people, I think, will respect that because maybe they'll read it. And then if the, if they don't jump in on this one, which, again, it's a dollar. So it's like, all right, if you can't throw in a dollar, like, all right, you probably have some shit going on in your life. But um, in this case, maybe they'll get you on the next issue. If you're planning for five and you're continuing to put out content like that, then you'll pick them, pick them up sooner or later. And at the worst case, if you turn around and collect it down the line. Mm hmm. And it's it's a dollar Canadian. Oh, so that, yeah, <laughs> that's even it's like better. Seventy five cents. Sorry, 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 economy, but I mean, yeah, it's even better for the American side because yeah, that's that's yeah. like next to nothing. So that's kind of you can't buy anything for that much right now. No, <laughs> no, and um, I'm so happy the Canadian dollar is finally going up a little bit. But oh my god, it was so bad for a while. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine being on the other side and having to back American Kickstarters with that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and with with that conversion, like I see that when I see UK Kickstarters, and I was like, oh man, like this is this may cost a dollar, but no, it really costs like a couple bucks more, and I have to like figure that out. Like, all right, do I want it? Do I, how much do I want this? Am I willing to pay a little bit more for it, knowing that it's going to cost me more than your average? Uh, uh, it's going to cost me a few pounds instead of a few dollars. Yeah, I'm I'm completely thrown off by pounds. <laughs> I, I'm I'm fine backing in American dollars, like. If I really want it, I don't care. Mm. But when I look at a pound, I'm like, how much is that? <laughs> like, I, I'm really not sure. Yeah, it's it's it is a well, like it it is literally a foreign concept. But uh, it's a uh, it's yeah. If for some, I don't know what they're doing over there, but I guess it's just a little little bit stronger than what we have on this side of the dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, are you doing anything different between the kickstarters? Like something that you wished you had done in the first Kickstarter, you're now doing in this one, or vice versa? Um, well, I mean, the, like the first Kickstarter was seven days because it's true what they say. Kickstarters are like a full-time job while, while they're going on. Mm-hmm. And I was really happy. I only did seven days on the first one because I was exhausted when it was done. And this time I'm a little braver. I'm doing 15 days. I'm still not brave enough to do 30 and I sometimes look at people who do 45 and I'm, I can't even imagine that. I've seen 60 day ones before and it's just like, Ugh. what, like, why do you do, what do you hate yourself? Like, wh- why are you going to put yourself I, yeah. through that? Yeah. So this time around I'm doing a little bit longer and I am trying to do a little more like outreach in terms of advertising, but I'm so bad at self-promotion. Like I, I just want to make stuff. I don't like selling <laughs> it is is it's, it's tough. Yeah, that's that's what they don't tell you about indie comics is that you have to be, you know, your own uh, you know, you're 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 the writer, but you're also like the editor, the marketing person, the you know, PR, all this other stuff. You're out there like a carnival barker trying to get uh people aware of that book and it's it's that is a full-time job. It can be. It's it's a lot of work to get that get the word out there. It's not like it just comes out of the sky. Mhm. Yeah, and I remember like my first Kickstarter um, I had this one backer. His, his name was Nathan. And he was probably on social media promoting my comic more than I was. Wow. Like, I know. I, I was so impressed. So, yeah, I nothing but, you know, good things to say about that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I'm sorry, to backtrack, what I realized when you were talking about your, your previous work, with The Finger... I, yeah, I, The I, Living Finger. I think I've read that because I... I really? Yeah, so... Um, it, I used to be a judge with the Gasly Awards, and I think that was submitted last year. I want to say, or am I making that up? Like, I feel like it. I, I feel like I've read it because that sounds very, 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 very familiar. So I remember like a dude finding a, a 
a finger and I was like, this is like so weird and bizarre. So, um, unfortunately ghastly awards aren't around anymore, but, um, I, I like remember that specifically. So funny how these kind of things, um, can all connect. So maybe like someone at Darby had submitted it, uh, for consideration. Yeah. Yeah. It it was definitely a fun story to write. Like I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, it was only three issues, which I found out after it was already done, you should always, always aim for at least four because it makes for uh, collecting a lot better. Like four or five issues make uh, trade paperbacks um, a lot better. Three issues isn't quite long enough, but uh, they, they still published it, which was good. Yeah, I found four, I mean, yeah. four, four issues are that sweet spot where it's like, I guess you get yeah. a bigger spine. It's easier to like, I've seen some three issue ones and it's just like, it's like, all right, this is just a big comic. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's okay, but it's like, yeah, you could, yeah, you get it, you get more bang for your buck. It seems when you do it that way for the four. Yeah. Issues, so. And my, my reasoning was like, oh, it's only three issues. It'll be a little easier for like a publisher to take a chance on it. Cause it's only three issues. Mm-hmm not realizing that I should have really been going for four because it was going to be collected and not released in, in individual issues anyway. And where can folks find find that book now? Uh, you can order it from uh, probably your local comic store. Uh, it was in, in a previews magazine. Okay. Uh, you can also get it online, Comixology. Probably, I don't know if Darby Pop, I, I, no, Darby Pop does have a store. So you could probably go to darbypop.com and and get it through them as well. Cool. Or any convention where you find Darby Pop, you'll find the Living Finger as well. Yeah, I'll have to see if they're at um at New York Comic Con this year. But we'll look that up. Yeah, hopefully. I, I feel like they should be. Mm-hmm. Now but yeah, not sure. So to to backtrack a bit, when you were in when you were in Japan, uh, and you'd watch some you were watching all these other horror movies. Do you remember that it, uh, any that stood out as um, as ones that were like uh, that more repeat viewing and not just like a mystery science theater kind of viewing? Yeah, like um, okay, probably, and I can't remember all, but the ones that really stood out for me in terms of just being really fun, because I, I kind of categorize my my movies into four categories. Uh, there's good, like ones that are just really well done, like Cabin in the Woods, The Thing, The Shining. There's bad movies that make me angry because I just wasted my time. <laughs> um, movies like Mummy Maniac or Ankle Biters. And if you ever see those movies, just ignore them completely because <laughs> they are so bad. And Ankle Biters has such a good premise. It's midget vampires. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I know it it's, sounds awesome. Yeah, it sells itself, but uh, no, yeah, par- but apparently it was, not. It was horrible. And uh, and then there's like fun movies. And the only movie I still remember the title of, and I really need to find a copy of it, is Blood Sucking Pharaohs from Pittsburgh. Wow, that is very specific. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember the movie too well. I remember there was one like kill scene with like some super powered shop vacuum cleaner. Huh. And I remember there being a subplot with the detective's wife. And it has nothing to do with the story. But there's a scene where she's in this bare room and it's her and like a table and she's allowed to go into this room and she's trying to quit smoking. These guys are trying to wean her off of the cigarettes and there's an ashtray and a, a pack of cigarettes and a lighter on this table. And she kind of like walks over there and her, her hands are shaking because of all the stuff they're doing to her. And she picks up a cigarette and she lights it and she's like hands shaking, takes it up to her mouth. And just as she's about to inhale the cigarette, they douse her with a fire hose <laughs> And she goes <laughs> slamming back into the wall, and it's it's just so bizarre. Like, but yeah, it's just a fun, bizarre movie. Uh, yeah, I I used to review movies and books too for horror talk, and I just had one too many horrible movies, and I was like, can I just do comics instead? Mm. Like, just comics. Like, I'll just I'll take care of all the comic stuff, and they're like, fine, yeah, go ahead. Like, so every so often now. Uh, you know, I'll get a note like, "Hey, man, you want to you want to try this out?" I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> like, like you know, fool me once, and every so often, yeah. I'll like, I'll I'll just take a look again. I'm like, "What about what's going?" I'm like, "No, no, I can't." Like, 
I've been burned way too many times with it. So I just, I stick to comics I, and I could not be happier. It was like one of the best decisions I ever made in there because oh, okay. there's just so many weird ones. And like, I, I, I can't, I'm trying, the only one that I, I found, and I actually found it at, I think my first time at New York comic con was grave encounters. Have you ever heard of okay. this one? It's uh, I have I I loved that movie like it, I was I and I stumbled upon it because I was just like looking through like the program of, of New York Comic Con and it was like oh like we're having to have a screening of this movie I'm like all right it's horror I'll check it out and I was blown away I thought it was so good so scary um, mm-hmm. and I know I think there's a couple of there's one or two sequels to it now that I'm gonna have to look up but it's like finding these hidden gems like I would have never found or heard about this movie at all but it came across my path through through this weird means and it's like it, it just stuck with me for so long what was the the movie that was like the final straw for you though i you know i don't know if it was a movie oh actually no 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 i could God, i'm trying to remember if i can remember the title of it i got these two horrible movies that were like direct to dvd movies i don't remember the first one the second one though had uh calista flockhart in it and she oh, was no. like a she was like a nurse in like a sanitarium or something and it was just like none of this makes any sense and she's horrible in this movie and it's just like i um but i think the one like i was open to doing movies but like we never got any of like the really good stuff you weren't gonna get like you know the latest um uh, you know, like Friday, the Friday the 13th ones or anything like that. Like it was, we were getting mm-hmm. a lot of the lower budget stuff, which is fine. Like there's certainly still a place for that. And we're happy to cover that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but it was more of the books that I would have. Cause like, I would spend so much time reading novels that I'm like, I don't give a shit about this. Like, this is just so bad and I have to finish it and I feel obligated to finish it. But like, you know, I think you mentioned before, like my, you know, you wasted your time and that's how I felt with it. And I'm like, I would much rather re- be reading a novel that I actually want to read instead of spending yeah. all this time. Cause I don't have a ton of time to read anyway. So then to have to sit there and, and slog through a book when I have a bunch on my shelf that I have, I bought and I'm waiting to read. I just haven't gotten to them. Like it was such a waste for me. Well, books are like such an investment too. Yeah. Like a movie, it's going to be over in two hours. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how bad it is, it's going to be over in maybe an hour and a half, two hours. A book though. Oh God. Yeah. I I found like I'm pulling the plug more on, on books and movies even that I'm like, if I get, if I get like 20, if I get a half hour into a movie and it's, and I, it doesn't have, it doesn't uh, grab me, then I'm done. I'll, I'll, I'll pull the plug. And I think I give, I think I give movies or not movies. Like I think I give books like maybe 50 pages that it's like, that should be ample enough opportunity for you to like, for you to do your job and, and uh, hook me. And if, if by that point I'm like, I, I either can't tell what the hell's going on or it's just like boring or dumb. Then it's like, it's, it's out. I got, I got better things to do with my time. Now I found that that was another like smart decision I made of like re- recognizing how valuable my time was and not dedicating yeah. it to that kind of stuff. Like, no, it's, it's a waste. Just don't, there are better things out there, and there's way too much content to consume, consume now to waste money on to waste time and money on bad content. Yeah. Have you seen it yet? No, I. You know, I don't know how, but like I, all I've really seen, I've managed to avoid any sort of like real spoilers. Like I've read the book like forever ago, but any real spoilers, I actually haven't even seen the trailer for it. Oh wow! I don't know. No, how. actually, not there. I yeah, because um, I was like, it came out, and I was like, I should watch this. And um, like, usually, I end up watching tra- movie trailers with my wife, and she just does not do horror at all. She does not mess with it. So like, I was like, oh, yeah, the it. And she's like, no, no. And, like, I was like, all right. So like, <laughs> I'll watch this later. And then I just forgot. And then all of a sudden, the yeah. movie came out, and it freaking killed. And I'm like, this is great. I'm so happy that this is performing so well. But no, I haven't seen yeah. that yet. But it's funny that it coincides um, with the release of uh, the first issue of Sync by John Lees, who's been on the, the show Ooh, before. Yeah. The first issue is all about clowns. And the clowns play a major role. It's not all about clowns, but clowns play a major role in it. And it's like, that's that's just great kismet timing for all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. lining up. Yeah, I haven't read Sync yet, but I met John Lees at Emerald City Comic Con this year, and he is delightful. He is fantastic like if you want to you want to talk to someone who loves this medium that guy is just he, he could talk your ear off about it i met i've met him at at, a, at new york comic con a few years ago and um 
took me a few minutes to get used to the accent, but once I did, I was like, oh, okay, I got. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, you, you just love this stuff. He loves horror comics, and it's just so like his his excitement and enthusiasm for it is so infectious that you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is all great. This is great. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I love I love talking to people like that. That it's like you just catch that excitement, and you're like, oh man, like I I I I want to talk about all these things too. Like, yes, you're absolutely right. Like, I got I have to go see those movies. I have to go read that comic. It's a it's a great feeling, yeah. and that that's what this kind of genre puts together. But I found like it's movies I'm I'm like just falling way behind on. Like unless it has like a superhero or a lightsaber in it, I'm probably not going to see it for a while. Um, but one of the other projects we actually did this as a as like a, a interlude episode when I didn't have a a guest on this show was uh, my editor and I were talking about this other show to do that was um, if you called if you watch this I'll read that and. I would give him a horror comic to read. He would give me a horror movie to watch and then we'd come back and talk about them. So it was like a movie horror movie comic discussion show kind of thing. And we just couldn't get schedules aligned to really do, do it regularly. So I, I I have, we have like three or four episodes recorded and I'll probably end up dropping them here and there. Or if I ever end up doing a Patreon, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I could get him to do it on a monthly basis and then uh, (laughs) put it out there. Yeah. Yeah, po- podcasts are like a bug where it's like, oh, I got to do more. And this is another idea I have for this. Is another, I have I have ideas for more shows. It's just finding the time and energy to do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, time time is a, a difficult thing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, like you, well, you're able you were able to carve out time to do uh to do comics, and it's like that's important too. So it's like getting at that creativity. I think like you know, through hell or high water, you could find it, find time to make it if there if those creative juices are flowing. Yeah, I just wish I could draw. Yeah. Have you ever tried? Yeah, I, oh God. Yeah. Actually, you know, that's, <laughs> that's one of the, one of the stretch, not one of the stretch goals, one of the pledge levels for the Kickstarter is you can pay 20 bucks and I will draw you a bad picture. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, de- you'll definitely have someone that'll take you up on that. Like it's, yeah. it's funny. I have a, I have a sketch from, um, Michael Morrissey, who's now, who's written, uh, hoax hunters and a few other books. He was in, he, he has a novel, that I think is coming out real soon too. But he was like, Oh, I'll do a bad sketch for you. And I held him to it when I met him. And then he was like, are you really sure you want me to draw something in this book? And I'm like, yeah, 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 do it. And it's like yeah. some ridiculous drawing of a, uh, uh, it's, it's like a, a, a big bird playing chess. It's just like, it's just so weird. And I'm like, I don't know where this came from, but it's, it's a great story. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so, I mean, if you've got low standards, yeah, <laughs> come, come come get me to try something. Like I said, I think someone will definitely take you up on it. So, um, yeah. All right. So look, we're we're we are moments away at the time of this recording of you actually launching the Kickstarter. I don't want to hold you up too much for that. So, um, uh, anything you wanna you wanna leave folks with? We will link the Kickstarter in the show notes for this episode. Um, I will be backing it myself. Uh, too, and I, I did back the first first issue Kickstarter, so looking forward to this one as well. And, I, and I've read the second issue already. Like that's, I'm putting my money where my mouth is in it. Like it is worth checking out. I want to see that in full color. And it looks it looks pretty awesome. So, um, uh, any anything else that you want to kind of leave folks with about um, Witch Creek Road? Um, honestly, no. Just I mean, check it out. I uh, you, you don't need to back it, um, but. It is posted for free, so you can read the first issue on either Tapas, Webtoons, or my personal website. Uh, the email is not the email. The web address is uh, releasing the serpents, all one word, so releasingtheserpents.com. So releasing the serpents has more traditional comic book pages. Tapas and Webtoons, they're a little more optimized for reading on your mobile phone or a tablet. But um, yeah, even if you don't back the Kickstarter, just go read it. Um, I mean, that's the whole point from putting online is just to get people to read it. Mm-hmm. And look, it's a dollar. Like, you could spare a dollar to read a comic like this. And again, yeah, you could look at it for free. But like, I feel like it's stupid not to check this book, <laughs> this book out for a single dollar. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's I, I, look, it is well worth it. Is it, you know, and you're not gonna find and again a dollar Canadian. Like, come on, yeah. <laughs> It's like seventy-five cents. Yeah, so it's we'll a bargain. We'll link up the tapas if people want to uh, to check out the book. Uh, try before you buy thing, but again, like it's a buck. Like give it, give it a shot. Um, 
you know, I've, I've, I've been burned a few times on Kickstarters or, or just by getting a book that it's like, all right, this was not worth the five bucks for a PDF. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm happy to say that Witch Creek Road over delivered on my, uh, on my cost uh, or my spend on it. So my, my return on investment was well worth it. Well, thank you very much. Cool. So, and otherwise, um, is there any other place that people should go to, to find you or Witch Creek Road online? Um, I'm horrible at being online. <laughs> like I have, I have Twitter, I have Instagram. I'm never on there. So the, the best place is probably Facebook. Uh, just search for Witch Creek Road. Um, you'll find the, the Facebook page. That is probably the place I'm most semi-regularly there. Mm-hmm. Um, or releasingtheserpents.com. You can sign up for my newsletter. I send out a newsletter every couple weeks. Cool. So again, we'll link all that up in the show notes. Um, I guess, well, social media will be something you'll have to work on if you're, you're going to have to keep promoting these books, especially for the next couple yeah. weeks as your uh, Kickstarter launches. Yeah, I just need to suck it up and do it. <laughs> it's not it's not all bad. I know I know Twitter can be a cesspool, but uh it's not all bad. There's a lot of good stuff in there too. Yeah. And I love Instagram. I just don't draw, so it's hard to be like, hey, here's a picture of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough when you can't create a visual to, to be on a visual platform without a uh like a visual background, it's like yeah, you're kinda of limited yeah. in what you're doing. No one wants to see a picture of, of the script, unfortunately. <laughs> no, no, no. Especially when it's mostly blank, because <laughs> Keenan is amazing and he does magic with almost nothing. <laughs> That's great. All right, folks. So uh, that about does it then for this episode of Funny Book Splatter. I have been James Ferguson with my guest Garth Mathams. You've been listening to Funny Book Splatter, a horror comics podcast brought to you by HorrorTalk.com. We've been bringing you the best in horror since 2002. In addition to comics, we cover movies, TV shows, books, and video games. We've got news, reviews, guest features, interviews, unboxing videos, and much more. Be sure to sign up to Steve's Deals newsletter to increase your horror collection without breaking the bank. Check us out at HorrorTalk.com and at HorrorTalk on Twitter.